Well, hi, this is Custom Works. I'm Clint Allen. And as we're working through on our Cobra Power Stroke, we're talking about the up pipes. If you're still running the original factory up pipes, nobody's ever taken a look at them. More than likely, you've got a situation where they're actually not doing what they're supposed to be doing anymore. And as you can see by all the crud and soot on here, that it's been leaking pretty bad. Uh, you can, if you want to stay a purist and keep it original, you can remove these ends and put new donuts in there, new donut gaskets, but I really don't suggest that. It, it's better off to put a brand new kit, up pipe kit on it, and it'll eliminate some of these leaks down the road so forget about that for the moment to disconnect these first thing that we want to do is at the manifolds exhaust manifolds right there i normally just come up with a grinder uh, or a dremel and i just cut the bolts now if you're able to get your wrench in there after years and years and years of rust heat and everything else and untighten those bolts well more power to you i'm just saying it's easier to get up there and just grind them right off they're done handled then the next thing that you want to do you know we're not touching any of this yet is you're going to be working from the underside and there's a lot of these kits that say that you cannot install this without removing the motor well that's bs you can do it. I've done it. I, I've never had to pull a motor to put an up pipe kit in it. So if this is still attached here where you can't pull it out like I did, you've got two bolts here and two bolts here. You just come up, get the old two extensions on here, just come on up here and uh, make sure you have a short socket. It just works a lot better. Make sure that you're square on that head so you don't strip the head off. And then just like the manifolds, when you first start out, go through and just tighten it a little bit, loosen it a little bit, tighten it a little bit, loosen it a little bit. Most of the times, these aren't going to give you too much of a hassle. But if you do have time where you can leave it sit the day before. As I've mentioned now in a couple of videos, if you take an oil can squirter and fill it up 50% uh, of lacquer thinner and 50% of ATF or worst case scenario power steering fluid, but ATF is the best. Get her mixed up real good, one to one ratio, and then start hosing these down in all the areas where the bolts make the connections. It, uh, it makes life a lot easier, but if you're gonna be in a situation where this is your daily driver, yeah, hit it beforehand. Chances of it actually soaking in is very nil to none, but it might help a little bit. Uh, I don't suggest going after these with a torch because we're not trying to save them. So if you go in there and you bust the head off, you know, it's a success. <laughs> it's just the way it is. But either which way, you can see that, how we uh, have the long extension you can get right up there. It's too difficult to be laying on top of the engine and trying to reach over. It, it just, it, you're better off. Get yourself underneath the truck, the longer extensions. So we'll stop beating that horse. So I just got to finish removing these here and we'll put the right socket on. And the socket that I'm using here, if it's factory original, we're going to be using a number 10.
and just as easy as that. Now, yeah, I'm cheating. I don't have the cab on. So for you, actually, it's going to be as simple as turning this a little bit outward and then pulling it down like this. You got this open area here on this side, so you're good. This side right here is a little bit more of a bear when you got the cab on and if you put a four inch exhaust on, it's gonna be a little bit more, a little bit more difficult. And in that particular situation, then the other pipe that sits over here, let me get that in place, let me put it the right way. That's sitting right here. You just turn that and it slides down right through here. And the new one obviously comes back up into place the same way. So that's how you handle that. Then once we have these two tubes removed, then we're gonna go after this clamp right here. And once again, if these are factory original, and you've never done any turbo work. This clamp is usually a bit of a bear to get off. If it's factory original, nobody's farted around with it. 7 sixteenths. Don't lose the nut. They like to go flying. And we're gonna get lucky here. It's gonna be easy to remove. A lot of times these are just a complete bear to get off of here. So we got that loose. Once we have her loose. Some of you watching, if you uh, have experience in doing this, you may not like to remove the, the nut at this point in time. I just find it a lot easier because the clamp does, does really clamp itself on quite tight sometimes. And it's holding itself on to the bottom here. Doesn't take a whole lot. Don't have to really go after it with a hammer if you just got the wrench in your hand. Just bang her off. And then we just go after that bad boy. You don't need a soft blow hammer because we're not saving it, so. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of a whack to get her off. Now you can do that from the underside with a uh, crowbar or you can come in through the top or through the side here kind of do one of those little tap taps because you know you got the top of the uh, cab right there. But either which way, do not forget that you got an alignment pin. So now we're ready to put on the aftermarket unit. Let's not forget we have that alignment pin Make sure the alignment pin is in. Make sure you've got a good fit. Now before you remove this, go through and just take a visual on where, how much proud the threads were. 
because you'll clamp this back together unknowingly, not having it in the clamp properly. You'll get it all done, start it up. You won't have any turbo and you'll go back in there and find out, oh, well, now I got to loosen up all the bolts, reposition this, put it back in place where it ought to be. So that's uh, key number one. Make sure you do that. Now there are torque specs for this, but it basically comes down to tighten her up, tighten her up real good. Not to the point where you're going to bust the bolt, but don't be afraid to tighten it on down. All right, next let's get the surfaces cleaned up. And what I mean by that is right here, and I usually just like to use a wire brush situation. I know you're going to be from underneath and you got all this in the way. You can come in here with a 100 or a 180 grit sandpaper and carefully and patiently go through and make sure that the mating surface is nice and clean. there. Now there's a reason why they have heat shields on here and to get those off these are kind of held on by elf magic. You can see right where they cut the end of the strap just push that on down. It usually comes right off push that right on down. That usually just comes right off, as simple as that. If they give you any hassle, just go through and kind of pry underneath, twist it, take a snips, cut it off. So we have that, and we have our new one, and the new one fits in there, get our new one on here, get that heat shield so it's properly placed. Now in these kits, you're going to have these gaskets, that's what makes the seal. Does not make a difference what direction. But once again, you're going to come up through here, come into the hole, give it a little bit of a push, and line it on up. You are going to need to do this before once you get everything in here, get it all lined up, and you're sure that this is exactly where it needs to go, put yourself a little mark, some kind of index on there, pull it back on out again, and get yourself some clamps from the old auto store. Go ahead and get your new clamps on. And 
and get those installed. Cut them to size. Now you might be laughing at about the size of the clamps that I'm using. Um, somehow <laughs> I ended up with a huge box of these uh, when we're working on some project and uh, you by all means don't have to go with that large of a clamp. It's just what we had sitting in the shop, that's all. And you don't have to tighten the pajizas out of these, but you know, just get them, get them ran down nice and snug so they don't fall off. Also take in consideration that when you're putting these on, that you want to position them in a way where it's not going to obstruct or cut you in the future. So take that uh, into consideration as well. And we had that on quite a quite a steep cut my finger kind of deal going on there. So we'll make sure that that's not going to stab anybody in the future. So I'm pretty happy with that. Get a couple bolts out here. We don't have to put any oil on these. We don't want to mess up our torque values. So get everything installed loose. If you're new to the mechanics game, you're new to doing this, anytime that we're installing much of anything, get all the bolts ran in, get everything making sure that you're not cross-threaded before we go after it. And I've got the two bolts installed here, somewhat loose. Next. 
We're going to come in and install these so they're somewhat loose. I know you're doing this from underneath. I'm making it look easy because I'm not working with the cab, but that way you can see what's going on here. That's the whole concept here. So I've got everything nice and snug now where I'm, I'm pretty happy, but I still want to get the old, the old peepers in here. And I want to make sure that I'm making contact, nice square contact, and I am. And as you can see, I'm running my air impact really low. What I don't want to do is get in there and, and you know, run her home and strip her on out. That's what I don't want to have happen. So I've got this snugged up here. Now these, these right here are 45 foot pounds. It's not that critical, all right? Get in there and get this tightened down first. Then we want to come up here, and these are 20 foot-pounds. Once again, I'm going to go after it with, with the torque wrench. So 20 foot-pounds are 240 inch-pounds. There we go. The reason why we want to make sure this is squared up and this is squared up and we want to tighten these down first and then tighten these down second is because this is where your stretch is. As long as we're sitting on this square, it's making good contact, we're not going to lose any air there, then this right here pulls her on up into place. This is once again is where the stretch is. And we're going to give her the old double click because there's a gasket in here. This side is done. Now we'll move on to this side right here. Let's get the driver's side put on. Got the camera changed for an angle for you, maybe a little bit better for you to help see what is going on. Same thing applies if uh, get get this side cleaned up. little bit of fiddling but once again if you remain patient I don't look at this as being a job I don't look at this as being well you know geez I gotta go do this on my truck take pride in the work most of us is probably seeing half-assed jobs done by mechanics because they got to get it done within that time period of whatever's in the Bible so they can make their, make their commission. And this is why we're doing the work ourselves because we don't want some guy who's getting paid a commission to go hammer out our work and screw up our truck. And it happens, it happens a lot.
Don't forget your heat shields. Like I said, they are here for a reason. Not that big of a deal for manual transmission, but for the automatic transmission, the amount of heat that is traveling up through here, you know, you've got that aluminum housing, you've got the torque converter. Yeah, it's a, it's a ways away, but engineers Engineers uh, put items on vehicles for a particular reason. And in, even in the early 2000s, before uh, the manufacturers came up with uh, predetermined death values on parts and vehicles, To make you go out and buy more and more and more, there are reasons why they do put these items on and you want to follow their caution of heat being transferred in this area. So get those uh, put back on if you want to go through and put the uh, hot rod tape on there or make her all cool looking like a hot rod, well by all means go ahead and do that. Nothing wrong with it. Make sure you're square once again. Looks like we need a wrench. Once again, your torque value down here is 45. All right, there we go. After you've been working on vehicles for a long time using torque values, you can feel it in your hands. These once again are 20. Snug it up. And then this side will torque. Click, click. Click, click. Leave her sit just a little bit. Obviously I'm not. I'm just saying leave it sit. Make sure you get a double click. And it is as simple as that. You've got new up pipes and no more leaks at this stage of the game in your vehicle. So as always, I hope you've learned something and you take it easy and you have a good day next video we're going to be rebuilding the oil cooler so check in for that one in the future